Are there too many cherry fragrances out there in the world? Well, I've got 20 here to put together a top 20 list, so there's definitely a ton. And a ton have come out within the last couple of years. In fact, we should thank Tom Ford's Lost Cherry, which came out towards the latter part of the 2010s for starting the cherry bandwagon. In fact, within the last couple of years, there's been a ton, a ton of cherry fragrances. So that's why I'm putting together a list for you today, a ranked top 20 list of cherry fragrances. And even though I said I'm bored of cherry fragrances, I wanted to update my list from a couple of years ago. So find out about top 20 cherry fragrances coming right up. Thanks so much for tuning in. It's Sebastian. We're talking about cherry and fragrances. Cherries, are you interested in this note in fragrances? It's a fruity note. Sometimes they go almondy, sometimes they go boozy, leathery, so many different directions. And we've got a top 20 list here for you with one bonus option that didn't fit the top 20. I do want to say there is a brand new Juliet Has a Gun fragrance launching soon if it hasn't already launched by the time this video airs. It's simply called Juliet. Juliet EDP featuring notes of sour cherries, cashmere, jasmine, pink pepper, and tonka beans. It's a given they're going to put some something almondy against the cherry note, and they've got the tonka beans here. Have you gotten your nose on this one yet? Perhaps I'll get my nose on it by the time this video airs. I am looking forward to that one. I am getting bored of cherry, as I said, so let's get started with this list and perhaps never do another cherry video for a long, long time. All right, we've got Intense Cherry from the house of Montal. Not my, one of my favorite cherry fragrances, but Mancera, Mancera has uh, Wild Cherry. Is that what it's called? Yeah, Wild Cherry, which is the, the fragrance that's on the uh, bonus section and after the outro. I left it off because it was not a very good cherry fragrance. But Intense Cherry is kind of a musky, sour cherry fragrance with a little bit of rose. There's jasmine, there's vanilla, and sandalwood. It's definitely better than the Mancera that I've featured at the bonus section, but it's not one of my most favorites. But in case you like Montal fragrances, maybe perhaps you should check it out. Maybe get yourself a sample to test it or test it in a store or something. But moving on to the Tom Ford fragrance Electric Cherry here at number 19. This one I gave a pretty negative review when it launched a year and so ago. Uh, it's it's like the, th the worst of the three cherry fragrances from Tom Ford. To me, it smells a bit shampoo-like or Bath & Body Works-like fragrance, and I didn't really care for this one. It's Morello Cherry Ginger Jasmine Sambac Amber Tolide and Pink Peppercorn. What a disappointment this one was. I didn't really like it. It's ranked here. It's better than Intense Cherry, but not by a lot. Are you a fan of Electric Cherry? Let me know. Put a comment down below so I can find out. We've got French Defense next from the house of Mind Games. I tried to really get into this one, but it's just not winning me over. And I hear some good things about this one from many different people. It's Black Cherries, Rose Absolute, Amber, Woods, Cedarwood, Chamomile, Cognac, Geranium, Mimosa, Patchouli, Rose, and Saffron. You know, I wanted the cherries to be a bit more prominent in this, and I felt like when I was wearing it, it seemed subdued. And I'm ranking this list in fragrances that I really, really love, if the cherry note is not as prominent, but it's there or fragrances that really prominently feature cherries, you can really smell them. This one unfortunately fell flat on, on me, but let me know what your thoughts are on French Defense from Mind Games. Next fragrance we've got is from the house of Moresque. It's Scarlet Rouge, this one right here. And this one to me, even though it says Cherry Blossom, for me I get a cherry actual fruit vibe in this one. But in the end, it's a powdery, coconutty, fruity take on cherries, or cherry blossom in this case, with ambery touches and vanilla touches as well. You do pick up the coconut. Maybe there's a little bit of a nuttiness in here as well. You know, that whole signature of tonka or bitter almonds or almonds and cherries together. You do have that. It's nicely done. But once again, I get the cherry vibe. It's not very, very prominent. Maybe it's like a combo of cherry blossom and cherry fruit vibe. Either way, Scarlet Rouge from the House of Moresque. Let me know if you're a fan of that one. So next up, we've got a fragrance from the house of Initio Parfums. It's one of their latest releases. It's Narcotic Delight, this one right here. Are you a fan of this one? It's a brand new release. 
And even though I thought this was better than side effect, I don't think it's not, it's not a lot better than side effect. It smells better for sure. But when I'm ranking it against the cherry fragrances, the cherry is not as prominent as I wanted it to be. It's more a, a, about like a boozy fragrance again, once again with tobacco and cognac, kind of like side effect, but they've added some cherries in this one with, you know, addition of black pepper, hedion, pink pepper, vanilla. So it's a spicy kind of boozy take on tobacco with cherries, but I want a little more cherry cherry oomph. I just don't get the cherries in this one. And it's also very, very interesting to see Hedion come up in a lot of fragrances from Initio Parfums. Have you guys noticed it? Hedion is a jasmine note. So it's kind of prominent in a lot of their fragrances. I see it come up quite often. And it's a disappointing for me. The more I started wearing this one, the more it disappointed me because I wanted that cherry vibe to come alive more. Because they already have side effect. The rest of the fragrance, if you remove whatever cherry trace of cherry there is here, you pretty much get side effect almost. It does remind me of side effect. It is better than side effect, but like I said, not much more better than what side effect is. So either way, Nar Narcotic Delight is at number 16. Next, we've got another Tom Ford fragrance. It's Cherry Smoke. This one's definitely better than Electric Cherry. It's dark cherry flavor, saffron, osmanthus, which is giving us apricots, olives, and leather vibes in this fragrance. There's Smoked Woods Accord, Cipriol. You know, it's kind of a smoky, incense -y take on cherries, and also leather as well from the saffron. Perhaps this might be something like, uh, I'm not saying it's inspired by Baby Cat or Vanna Gloria, but kind of idea of that where you're taking kind of a leather incense kind of a thing here and then combining it with cherries instead of vanilla. I like it. It's not a wow fragrance for me. It's ranked higher than electric cherry, but I still prefer lost cherry from this uh, Tom Ford house. I, I felt like since they started it, it's giving us like one of the best cherry, you know, boozy cherry, almondy kind of gourmand fragrances. But either way, cherry smoke here is at number 15. Next fragrance going to a ha house called Prod with Cherry Syrup, this one right here. Are you guys familiar with this one? This one to me is like a cross between Lost Cherry and also Baccarat Rouge 540. And if you like this combo, you like cher you know, Lost Cherry and you like the other fragrance, Baccarat Rouge, you've got both of them here. It's basically taking Baccarat Rouge, throwing in a bunch of Lost Cherry-like notes in there with the cherry cherries, sour cherries, and all that good stuff, and then creating a fragrance. It seems pretty much like a clone to me, but I quite like it. I do enjoy Baccarat Rouge, and uh, I like I like Lost Cherry. I'm not like wowed by all these cherry fragrances, but definitely some of them are quite good, and the, the closer to the top spot, you'll see which one is my favorite. But I, I'm liking this one, and I'm putting it here. It's not ranked at the highest, but I like the way this smells much more than what we have had already in this video. But Cherry Syrup, it's a Thai house called Prod. Let me know if you're familiar with that house. Next, going to the house of Creed, it's Carmina, this one right here. Are you familiar with Carmina? Carmina is actually quite a great release from Creed. Very priced high though, overpriced I should say. And it's a nice combination of black cherries with rose. There's May Rose here. You can really, really authentically smell the May Rose. If you've ever smelled how May Rose smell, it's really, really prominent in this. And it's a nice contrast to the fruitiness of the black cherries in here. In addition to these notes, you've got peony, musk, amber, myrrh, frankincense, cashmere wood, violets, saffron, pink pepper. And once again, the cherries are not super strong. It's a nice balance of the cherries with the rose. So you're getting quite a bit of rose in this. And also the peony comes in to kind of like contribute a rosiness and more of a floral seed to the rose note in here. So it kind of cuts through the fruitiness, but still very nicely done. But ranked here at number 13, it's Carmina at number 13 from the House of Creed. Next up, going to the House of BDK, it's Rouge Smoking. This one right here, created by Amélie Bourgeois. So this is a really, really, really good fragrance from this house. I actually really like it. I've fallen in love more and more with it after I sampled it more and more. The only problem is I don't get the cherries that I wanted to get with it. But other than that, it's really nicely executed and I really love the way it smells. And by the way, uh, BDK is supposed to be launching another X-ray sometime in the near future. 
Could it be Rouge Smoking? Because I hear this is like their third most popular fragrance. Maybe that's what they're going to do. But this is Cherries, Tonka Beans, Vanilla, Heliotrope, Pink Pepper, Italian Bergamot, White Musk, Ambroxan, Cashmere, and Lebanon. It's a really great combination, really nicely done. And I feel like the cherry gets overpowered by a lot of other notes. There's a lot going on here. It's vanillic, it's powdery, it's almondy, spicy, citrusy as well. And then lots of musk in the base to an amber also to kind of like, you know, enhance the life of the fragrance. But to me, I just wanted a little more cherry. But in the end, it's a really great fragrance. It's just ranked lower because I didn't get much of a cherry vibe, but still a really great fragrance, if that makes sense. So it's Rouge Smoking from the house of BDK. Next, going to the house of Olfactive Studio, it's Close Up. Close Up is a really, really great cherry fragrance. Did you know it featured uh, cherries here? There's a really nice cherry vibe in this one. It's also got a bit of a funky animalic musk here. It kind of sort of reminds me a little bit of Wajan, but more of a musky, funky, animalic kind of a thing with cherries thrown in. It's featuring notes of tonka beans, white tobacco, cherries, spices, amber, coffee, patchouli, musk, rose, and cedar. Very underrated fragrance from this house created by Anique Monardo. Definitely get your nose on it if you haven't, especially if you like musk. To me, there's that kind of a real authentic deer musk thing happening against all the other notes. Kind of maybe hint hinting a little bit at musk ravageur, but not quite but more in the Wajan cherry, boozy, musky kind of direction. So it's close up from the house of Olfactive Studio. That is at number 11. Then moving on to the house of Born to Stand Out, it's Indecent Cherry, this one right here. Indecent Cherry is a cherry bomb. And once again, it's also a very powdery dry fragrance like a lot of the other fragrances from this house. I think that's a kind of the DNA, even though they work with a ton of different perfumers, they have a style and a DNA that goes across. It's cohesive with all of their fragrances. This is another fragrance that's wild cherries and sour cherries with rose, almonds, saffron, amber, benzoin, vanilla, musk, mimosa, and strawberries. So it does have a fruity edge for sure, but it becomes powdery, vanillic, ambery, musky as well. And then of course, uh, the mimosa that's in here gives you like a floral edge and then also a light, light, light almond effect coming in which enhances the almondy edge, but with kind of a more of a floral touch and powdery touch from that mimosa. Are you guys a fan of mimosa? Let me know. But do you enjoy Indecent Cherry from the house of Be Born to Stand Out? Let me know. Put a comment down. But next, going to the house of KLE, it's Love Fest Burning Cherry 48. Uh, so this one came out a couple years ago. I think it was a pretty popular fragrance. And once again, it's kind of, I think, the, from the popularity of Lost Cherry and fragrances like that, you know, a lot of different brands make fragrances similar. And even though I'm not saying this is identical, it might have some touches of similarities of the original, but it's burning cherry, it says. There is a smokiness about this one. And also there's the Palo Santo note, which is that kind of meditative, kind of earthy, woody, kind of lightly smoky edge to the fragrance. But it's burning cherry, raspberries, praline, Palo Santo, guyac wood, patchouli, tonka, amber tolide. It's got that kind of muskiness from the amber tolide in the base, but it's a lot of woods against the the burning cherry here. So there's a smoky edge about this one. It does get fruity and the cherries don't last as much, which I kind of wanted to for it to last, but it's a decent offering. It's not necessarily very lost cherry-like from Tom Ford, even though it hints at it kind of thing. So it's Love Fest Burning Cherry 48 from the house of K.A. Lee. So speaking of lost cherry at number eight, it is lost cherry here. You know, I had this ranked pretty high on the last video. In fact, it was number one. And I felt like I needed to give it that number one spot because it is the fragrance that started it all. But now that I've gone through a lot of other fragrances here and really started embracing cherry fragrances and then falling out of love with cherry fragrances and getting annoyed of all the cherry fragrances, I have put this at number eight. But this is definitely the fragrance that started the cherry craze. And it's definitely a really great release. I think a lot of people are fans of this one. It's cherries, bitter almonds, liqueur, tonka beans, Peru balsam, vanilla, benzoin, cinnamon, sandalwood, plum. It's very boozy. It's very almondy. It's fruity for sure, but just very cherry-like. And I think it's a fun, playful fragrance. Definitely now it deserves a number eight spot. But let me know if you're a fan of Lost Cherry from the House of Tom Ford. What do you like about it? What do you hate about it? 
Moving on to the house of New Notes fragrances, it's Latte de Cherry, this one right here. Are you familiar with this one? And again, it's similar, reminding me of Lost Cherry for sure, but this one is really, really potent and longer lasting compared to Lost Cherry. This is for sure an extra de parfum. So it's featuring notes of cherries, red berries, almonds, tonka, vanilla, hot spices, sandalwood, musk, amber, jasmine, sweet orange. So it does go in a little bit of a different direction. A lot of spiciness in this one. It does have the almondiness, and for sure, almonds, tonka, cherries kind of go together. They have them in a lot of fragrances. This does get sweet and floral too, but in the end, it reminds me of uh, Lost Cherry for sure. But once you get past the reminder of Lost Cherry, it will go into different directions, doing different things that uh, Tom Ford's Lost Cherry does. But again, I feel like it's inspired by the, the whole Lost Cherry craze and things like that. Still, I think this is a solid release from this house. This Latte de Cherry from the house of New Notes Fragrances. Then we're going to the house of Gritti. Uh, and it's a Duquesa, this one right here. Are you familiar with Duquesa? And this is a really solid release, really great uh, job done with this one. And again, it's a, a reminder of Lost Cherry once again, still going in a different direction. This time we're having cocoa and warm spicy notes of cloves with this particular cherry fragrance, which features black cherry, bitter orange, saffron flower, jasmine, cocoa, iris, cloves, almonds, brown sugar. It's nicely done, nicely executed, really, really great smelling fragrance. If you're a lover of cherry fragrances, this is definitely something that you should get your nose on and put it high on the list. But again, if you've smelled Lost Cherry, you might not need a lot of these fragrances, but if you're craving other cherry fragrances and you want to explore the world of cherry fragrances, you should definitely get your nose on these. So this is Duquesa from the house of Gritti. Next, going to the house of Boho Boco, it's Wet Cherry Liqueur, this one right here. Are you familiar with this one? I really do like this one quite a bit. It's one of my favorite fragrances from this house, not my top three, but definitely a solid release. It's cherry, liqueur note, cherry syrup, strawberries, caramel, Turkish rose, sandalwood, vetiver, tonka, and vanilla. You're seeing a lot of fragrance notes like roses with cherries, almonds with cherries, tonka with cherries, and again, it's the amount they put in to kind of twist and direct, uh, you know, take the, the fragrance into different directions. This one does have a bit of an indie edge to it, but it's still got that kind of mass appealing smell to it, like Lost Cherry does, but in an indie way, which I quite like here, and that's why it's ranked higher. Definitely a really solid offering from the, the House of Boho Boco. It's Wet Cherry Liqueur. Let me know if you're a fan of that one and what you think about it. Next, going to the House of Laurent Mazone. This is Red Diamour, this one right here. Are you familiar with this one? This is ranked pretty high and I really, really love it. Once again, it's Lost Cherry-like, but it's done so nicely. There's also a kind of a pulpy effect with this one. You can actually wear the pulpy, thick, creamy, custardy-like effect, which I quite like here. It's a leathery take on cherries, and we've got another one coming up here in a bit as well, but in fact, it's got this kind of really interesting custard-like pulpiness that I quite like in the cherry form. So it's black cherries, black leather, saffron, pink pepper, patchouli, heliotrope, tonka, palo santo, and this one features palo santo just like the Kali does, but I quite like this one more because it's a bit more gourmand in that kind of custard-like pulpiness that's uh, you know, present when you're wearing this one. I really like this one, and also the fact that it has the black leather, it gives it a bit more of a unisex vibe, maybe more masculine, I should say. Red Diamore from the house of Laurent Mazone, really nice offering. Next, going to the house of Lorenzo Pizzalia, it's Cherry Ink. Yeah, I am ranking this one pretty high. It's really, really great, nicely done. The last couple of fragrances of this house that were not favorites of mine, but this one does smell really, really awesome. It's cherries, sour cherries, red wine, ink, almonds, rum, damask rose, myrrh, tonka, musk, amber, benzoin, and you name it. There's a ton of notes in here. Very complex, very long lasting, very, it does have a synthetic smell, but in a good way, you know, it's, it's just overdosed with a lot of cherryness and fruitiness. And that red wine adds this kind of a boozy, more fruity kind of a wine-like effect, giving me a little bit of mulled wine effect in this with cherries, you know, boiling in that to create the mulled wine thing. So it's a really, really nicely done fragrance. And that ink comes in here, but it, it just, adds a more of a this kind of like dark inky effect to the fragrance which basically you know blends really nicely with the cherries that are in here in the red wine so this is cherry ink from the house of lorenzo pazzalia 
This next one's from the House of Mancera. It's Tonka Cola. I've ranked this one pretty high. I really do enjoy this one. And even though I don't find it a cherry bomb, I like the way it's come out. It's fizzy cola, Brazilian Tonka, black cherry, cinnamon, spices, and you name it. Really wonderful Coca-Cola, cherry cola, nutty Tonka kind of a combo. I bet once in a while I get, you know, craving for a cola. And what I do is at the theater, I kind of blend regular cola with cherry cola and also vanilla cola. So this kind of gives me that kind of an effect, except it doesn't have the nuttiness from the Tonka. But it's a really, really nicely done fragrance. Even though it's not a cherry overdose, I've ranked it quite high because I really, really love it. So it's Tonka Cola from the House of Mancera at number two. Number one is from the House of Room 1015. I'm going with the uh, Cherry Punk X-Ray. You can go with the original. I much prefer the Cherry Punk X-Ray because I love this combo of this dark vinyl-like rubbery leather against the cherries, which does remind me of the cherries from Lost Cherry. It's a really, really great combo. It's a nice fruity leather fragrance. It's a bit, you know, you know, it's got this kind of like punky attitude, which with the fruitiness and the leather together uh, creates for young energy and also a bit more m mature energy here with the leather. But it's black leather, cherries, saffron, Sichuan pepper, patchouli, mimosa. So it's powdery, it's earthy, spicy, a bit citrusy as well. And for sure, lots of leather. We've not only got the black leather we've got the saffron as well it creates for a really really great wear it's a young playful fragrance with more mature attitude kind of a thing because it's a very leathery fragrance and the leather in this is a bit rubbery as i said kind of uh you know edgy a really great fragrance room 1015's cherry punk extra is really really great and that's my number one fragrance in the top 20 cherry fragrances video what are your thoughts on these cherry fragrances and also let me know if you're bored and tired of cherries and fragrances yes i'm bored of cherries but i wanted to get this video out for you guys some of you were asking me and also just wanted to let you have it so you can look back and see what's out there as far as cherry goes and uh, you know cherry fragrances go but let me know your thoughts on these fragrances let me know what's missing i know there's probably a lot more out there these are not the only ones there's more than 20 out there put a comment down so i can find out but either way guys thanks so much for watching today's video if you have any questions or comments please list below please like this video please share it follow me on instagram and facebook and i'll be back with more videos very soon have a good one goodbye Last but not least, one more Mancera that just didn't deserve to be in the main list, but I'm highlighting it in case you want to try it. It's wild cherry, but it features black cherry, white musk, vanilla pods, patchouli, heliotrope. This one just doesn't do it for me. It's really, really boring. Unlike Tonka Cola, which I love, this one, I bought it blind and I was like, why did I even buy this? I love the bottle though. But you know, I wanted the fruitiness to come forward. I just don't get the fruitiness. It's almost like misleading name. I'm not getting a lot of cherry. And if I was somebody that was used to Tom Ford's Lost Cherry and went to this, I'd be disappointed, completely disappointed. I just wanted more cherry. I'm not getting it. And also it's missing the rose. It's missing the, the almondy touches. So I think this came out before the big you know, Tom Ford Lost Cherry craze started when that fragrance, you know, launched. But um, I think it's a, kind of a boring fragrance and that's why it's ranked here at number zero or bo bonus option. Anyway, this is Wild Cherry from the House of Mancera. And do let me know if you're a fan of that one. Why do you like it? And if you don't like it, why do you hate it?